Hello and welcome to the excisional biopsy procedure video. For this procedure you will need a surgical marker, a scalpel with a 10 or 15 blade biopsy kit, nylon sutures, absorbable suture, drape, a ruler, gloves, specimen jar, forceps, sharp spin and scissors. For demonstration purposes, we'll be performing the procedure on pig skin. So, let's begin. Prior to starting your procedure, you want to make sure that you've completed all of the following. A pre-surgical check, a detailed consent process, that you've established your sterile field and used appropriate local anaesthetic. Once these have been completed, then we can start the procedure by outlining the lesion of concern using a surgical marker. It is also useful to measure the lesion using a ruler. Depending on the type of skin cancer suspected, a margin is applied. This means that you are taking a margin of normal looking skin around the lesion in addition to the lesion itself. For the purposes of this video, we will be using a 5mm margin. Now that you have the lesion with an appropriate margin marked out, you need to make this into an ellipse. The ellipse or fusiform excision is the most common type of excision. It is based on the rule that the length to width ratio is 3 to 1 with the angle and the apices ideally between 30 to 45 degrees. This rule ensures that there is no excessive tension on the wound, that redundancies are minimised, and that the final closure will be a linear line of sutures. An advanced tip here is to try to orientate the suture line parallel to the relaxed skin tension lines for the best cosmetic result. Once the area is all marked up, prepare the scalpel by removing the blade from the packet. The most common types of blades used in dermatology are the 10 and 15 blades. The 10 blade is physically wider and is sharpest at the convex belly. This makes it ideal for excisions on the back. The 15 blade is the most common blade used in excisions. It is physically smaller and comes with a sharp tip. It is used for most other anatomical sites. A helpful hint here, for excisions, it is best to ensure that there is sufficient traction on the surgical site before beginning the procedure. This can be provided by an assistant or by using your non-dominant hand. To begin the incision, use the point of the blade to make the initial cut at the apex of the ellipse. Then, continue the incision along the outside of the marked line with the sharp belly of the blade. For the best results, ensure the blade is perpendicular to the skin and maintain a 90 degree angle throughout. It is also ideal to use smooth and purposeful motions rather than short, jagged movements for your excision. The first incision should aim to reach the level of the subcutis. Once you've cut around the ellipse, you can gently lift the apex of the specimen with forceps, then using scissors to release it from the underlying tissue. A quick note here, after the ellipse is excised, 
we may have to perform a standing cone correction to address any excess skin at the apices of the excision before moving on to hemostasis. The specimen can then be placed into an appropriately labelled specimen jar. Here we have placed it on the bench for demonstration purposes. When carrying out a procedure on a patient in a real life scenario, then put the specimen straight into a specimen jar to avoid any contamination. We then move on to hemostasis. Meticulous hemostasis using electrocautery is required for large excisions and will prevent complications such as hematoma and post-operative bleeding. Once the specimen has been safely delivered to the jar, we can return to the wound. The next stage we will perform is what we call undermining. Undermining is the process of loosening the tissue underneath the surrounding skin, usually with blunt dissection. This is not always necessary, but can be helpful for areas of reduced skin laxity where wound approximation would be difficult. Knowledge of the underlying structures is important during undermining to prevent surgical complications. Once the lesion has been excised, the skin and underlying tissue is sutured, closed in two layers. The first layer is the deep subcutaneous sutures using absorbable suture material. These will dissolve typically within two weeks. It is important to take a generous bite of the subcutaneous tissue on either side of the wound to ensure that the edges come together and good wound apposition is achieved. A tip here, for suturing excisions under tension, start at the apices, creating a zipper effect. This allows for less tension on the central sutures. This process can take a little time, so what you are seeing now is a sped up version. The second layer is the skin or cutaneous sutures. There are a range of methods of performing skin sutures. However, the most common is single interrupted, non-absorbable nylon sutures ranging from 3O to 5O. This process can take a little time, so what you are seeing now is a sped up version. Once you've completed the two layers of suturing, the final step is to check that there is no active bleeding from the wound edge. To do this, using a piece of gauze or a cotton tip applicator to press lightly on the wound edge. If there is a small amount of bleeding, then apply firm pressure to the wound for several minutes before rechecking. If there is a large amount of bleeding, then the wound may need to be reopened to ensure that there are no bleeding vessels underneath. Once you are happy that the wound is responding correctly, then apply a dressing and provide appropriate aftercare for the patient. This concludes the excisional biopsy procedure. Thank you for watching and we hope that you enjoy the other educational videos in this series. For more information on all of our educational resources and upcoming courses, please visit our website, stjohnsdermacademy.com. Finally, thank you to our partners who do not have any influence over any of our educational content or delivery. Please visit the Partners tab on our website for more details. Thank you and see you again soon.